Welcome back! According to what we saw when spying with the hole in the wall, the Minotaur's lair should be on the other side of this wall with the tapestry. And a switch to open a secret door should be behind the tapestry. Let's see what we can find out. A very beautiful, very dusty tapestry hangs on the wall. I think if you didn't use the hole in the wall to spy, Alexander will not be able to find the switch. Hmm. This tapestry looks familiar. Now let's see. I don't feel anything. Aha! A hidden latch. Alexander triggers the little latch. A secret door rolls open. Behind which we can find the Minotaur, I presume? <coughs> so I guess we'll be prudent to save. No! I beg of you! Please don't hurt me! Your struggles are useless. It's the Minotaur, and he's struggling with a winged one's girl. She must be Lady Celeste. Uh-oh, this does not look good. Alexander has found the Minotaur's lair. The chamber has the rank smell of a beast's den. But a strange altar testifies to the Minotaur's evil intelligence. A monstrous altar towers in one corner of the room. Alexander shudders with revulsion at the thought of the rituals performed at that sacrificial table. Beautiful winged one girl is struggling for her life against the Minotaur. The Minotaur is a huge monstrous beast with cloven hooves and the head of a bull. There's a bit of fire. A pit has caved in the floor in one corner of the Minotaur's lair. Flames rise from the pit as though from the throat of a dragon trapped in the earth. The fire makes the lair unbearably hot. We have to do something! Alexander prepares to take on the Minotaur with his bare hands. He steps forward bravely and is spotted by Lady Celeste. You there, human! Help me! Help! <sighs> Who dares enter my lair? Um, I do? I ask you to release your captive or suffer the consequences. Never you die, human. As the Minotaur advances in attack, Alexander slowly backs away. Until he can back away no more. Now where to, little man? Well, I guess we could make a break for the door. That would put Lady Celeste in danger. That's not a good idea. To try and Alexander fight the Minotaur. Alexander prepares to take on the Minotaur with his bare hands. Alexander prepares to take on the Minotaur with his bare hands. Hand-to-hand -hand combat with a Minotaur is apparently not a great idea. I Ouch. Tickets. Oh. Next. There's something to be said for taking the bull by the horns, Alexander. Indeed. Alexander prepares to take on the Minotaur with his bare hands. And actually the narrator is right. The Minotaur is basically a bull. And what are bulls famous for? An aversion to red, of course, even though they're actually colorblind, but who cares? This is a Minotaur, maybe that doesn't apply. 
and the uh, scarf from the Red Queen fulfills our requirements nicely. The ribbon doesn't. Even though it's red, it's too small. Alexander, his back inches from the fiery pit, tempts the Minotaur with the Red Queen scarf. Look here, you bully! Nice, bright red. Red. Now you die! We did it! The Minotaur drops from sight amidst the consuming flames. Slowly, his scream fades as well. Have you been harmed, Lady Celeste? Are you all right? No, I am not all right. I assume you do not intend to leave me tied up on this vile monstrosity. Uh, of course not. Sorry. Let's see. If you'll give me a moment, I'll have these untied in no time. I can't wait that long. Look, I wear a small dagger just inside my belt. It should be enough to cut the rope. Oh, all right. I, I've got it, Lady Celeste. Here we go. Thank you. You may keep the dagger as a gift for saving my life. That's very generous. Forget it. Do you mind if we just get out of here now? A little less arrogance and a little more gratitude would go a long way, Lady Celeste. The Winged One's guards, bored with the pointless waiting, are startled by the sound of rock moving against rock. Ooh, Lady Celeste, quite thee well. I'm quite well, thanks to the bravery of a mere human. So much for your superior intellect. Yes, me lady. <laughs> now bring him along. I'm going home. The genie is spying on us again. I see you have proven yourself the hero of the prophecy. Well, I am expected to thank you for saving my daughter's life. So I thank you. I am obliged to thank you for the restoration of our sacred catacombs. It means much to our people. We have already begun the process of clearing the deadly traps from its rooms. It is also my duty to grant you a visit with the Oracle. So this I do. I will grant you the freedom to leave here unharmed, despite my orders to the contrary from the Crown. But there, my obligations to you end. I have no love for Alhazred, but he is my liege, and if Princess Kasima trusts him and wishes to wed him, my guards will take you to the Oracle now. When your time with her is through, I want you to leave the city of the Winged Ones and never return. I don't know who you are or what you want here, but I will not disobey my crown further. I thank you, Lord Azure. I will respect your wishes. Silly though they may be. Hail to thee, great oracle. Lord Azure sends you this wingless mail. It appears that he solved the cliffs of logic and... Defeated the Minotaur in his lair. So I have seen. So this is the one that haunts my pool of late. Welcome, young seeker. What knowledge do you desire? Princess Kasima, whatever you can tell me, great oracle. Ah, of course, the princess. That explains my images. Let us see what we can see. I see a maiden, lovely and pure, but surrounded by evil. She is a rose set amidst bitter thorns. It is her fate to be the pawn of dark powers. And yours to try to redeem her. How? 
How do I redeem her? Fate is not like the cut of a blade, young one, but rather like the myriad of paths formed when a hammer cracks ice. I will tell you what I can, but what will actually come to pass is up to you. I see that any attempt to reach the girl will force you into battle, a struggle against a dark force. If you lose, your life will be forfeit. Who must I fight? A great darkness surrounds your adversary, preventing me from seeing clearly. I can only make out the shape of a black cloak. But before this final struggle, I see an infiltration, a dangerous game of hide-and-seek in corridors filled with enemies. The risks are high, but it is the only way to reach the one you seek. There is more than one way into this place. Your choice will dictate much. What else do you see, mighty oracle? Oh! Oh, such pain. I see two restless spirits crying out for revenge. These shades could help you destroy the Dark Force if they were to be brought back from their spiritual form. Yet this is only one possible path to your destiny. I'm afraid this is getting beyond me. I know very little about the afterlife. I can only advise getting counsel from the druids. Be warned. The druids are reclusive and dangerous. They might aid you, or they might destroy you. Like their island, the druids' nature is hidden in the mists. There is nothing more I can do for you, except to give you this. It is water from the sacred pool. That and my blessing go with you. Thank you, great oracle. And so it seems we have a choice before us. Either we go and try to bring back these two restless spirits from the dead to help us with our quest, or we don't. However, that choice is not yet before us. Um, there are still a few things we uh, must do before we come to the split in the path, but we will uh, have to do them in the next video.